Hi, Kim Barker here. I am so excited to tell you about my summer 2020 book pick. It is Manifesto for a Moral Revolution, Practices to Build a Better World by Jacqueline Novogratz. She is the New York Times bestselling author of The Blue Sweater, which I know many of you have read. This book is an essential list of leadership practices for everyone who wants to do good in the world. And that should be us all, right? One of my friends from my smart group, as I call it, downloaded a discussion guide on this book. And in the guide, it says, this is the author's attempt to share the principles she's learned from thousands of change agents based above all on the value of human dignity. In the first chapter, Ms. Novogratz said, if you're not sure what to do, just start. I love that. One question is, what would you do if you could happily spend the next 40 years of your life working on it? If you're not sure the answer to this question, just start doing good. Life will guide you in the direction you need to be. These guys arrived in Africa and the local government asked them to make something of a closed down chicken processing plant. They knew nothing of chicken processing. They were city folks, but they figured it out and they brought jobs to the area and the nutrition as well that was needed. In Holding Opposite Values and Tension, the author refers to the saying that the Italian philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli wrote about the tensions of leading with love or fear, two proxies for generosity and accountability. Well, Machiavelli's prince preferred fear, young leaders often tell her that they would rather lead with love. But if fear or accountability on its own can be punitive and diminishing, love or generosity along alone can create dependency and entitlement with both progress hangs in the balance. In this section, Listen to Voices Unheard, it talks about partnering with those you want to help. There was a company that wanted to bring electricity to a village and the woman they were speaking with said, they needed fans, not light. They needed fans to keep the bugs away when they were at home doing their schoolwork, etc." Fans were the most important, then lights, she told them. In this section, you are a drop in the ocean. I love the quote by Rumi that says, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. You have the entire ocean in you to help mankind. There was a section in the book that discusses how two business people negotiated by finding out what the others wanted. They came to a consensus in a win-win situation. I kept thinking, this, why is this so profound? This is how business should be done every day. It reminds me of a story that a coworker of mine used to tell. She had one orange in the fruit bowl and both of her daughters came running into the kitchen wanting the orange. After some investigating, she discovered that the one daughter wanted the orange because she had just worked out. The other one wanted the orange rind for a recipe that she was going to be making. After a very short amount of interest-based problem solving, the solution became win-win. That is how so many things should be done today. Everything should be done that way. I just love the manifesto. It starts by standing with the poor, listening to voices unheard, and recognizing potential where others see despair. It demands investing as a means, not an end, daring to go where markets have failed and aid has fallen short. It makes capital work for us, not control us. It thrives on moral imagination, which is the humility to see the world as it is and the audacity to imagine the world as it could be. It's having the ambition to learn at the edge, the wisdom to admit failure and the courage to start again and again and again, if need be. It requires patience and kindness, resilience and grit, a hard-edged hope. It's leadership that rejects complacency, breaks through bureaucracy, and challenges corruption. Doing what's right, not what's easy. It's the radical idea of creating hope in a cynical world, changing the way the world tackles poverty and building a world based on dignity. Two people have come to me this week wanting to talk about their organization getting rid of more senior, better paid employees so they could bring in cheap labor and pay them next to nothing. Besides it being illegal, it's also unethical. 
in this age of standing up for so social justice, it is important that we do so. It is what, this is what I told them I would do. First, well document it. You have to prove it on paper using data, of course, because we all know that data is our friend. Second, share this information with a compliance hotline if there is such a thing at the organization. Third, let the organization know that this is happening and people are becoming aware of this. Always remember that there is strength in numbers, but still try to do so anonymously if possible. Fourth, file a report with the EEOC. Fifth, make the media aware of it. An organization should value their senior elder employees, but let's say they want to trim the payroll, then give incentives for the older, more senior employees to retire and not just push them out. When I was a hiring manager, I would always try to partner a younger, less experienced person with a more senior employee. I wanted them to learn everything they could from the older employee and from the younger employee. Older employees were like gold to me. As the manifesto says, we need to build a world based on dignity. We need to stand up for what is wrong now more than ever so we can create a better world for us all. This book encourages each reader to write their own manifesto. I think that is such a great idea. Please get this book today and begin reading it. You will be so glad you did. Thanks.